So in this video, I'm going to try and show you seven ways to find the modulus of a complex number. Now, we've all been told the basic way that we all learn when we do our first class in complex numbers and complex analysis. And that is the modulus of z equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, where z equals a plus bi. That's the one we've always been told. So I'm going to try and show you seven more. So I'm going to put this in here as our standard one. And then I'm going to show you some more. OK, let's take this one off the board. So the next one I'm going to go for is the square root of z times the conjugate of z. So this bar across the top means conjugate. Now the conjugate, for example, using this complex number, we would have a minus bi. That would be our conjugate. Okay, so z equals minus one and z equals plus i. So I'm gonna just number these one and two with a subscript there. Okay, let's give these a go. So the absolute value of minus one equals the square root. Okay, so our complex number is minus one. So our z here will be minus one. And our conjugate of minus one, well, there is no complex number, uh, so there's no imaginary part of this. So that's just a zero. So therefore the conjugate of a uh, plus bi is a minus bi, which is still minus one. Okay, so now we need the square root Minus one times minus one, that is one. So then that equals one. So the absolute value of minus one, if you're doing real analysis, that is just one. So that's correct. Now, what about our second value? So let's plug in for uh, absolute value of Z2 equals square root of Z2 conjugate of Z2. OK, so here we've got I, so we've got I in there. And then our conjugate of uh, this value here would be negative I. So we've got I times minus I. OK, so following down, we've now got the square root. I times minus I, that's going to give us minus i squared. Well, i squared we know is minus, uh, square root of minus, is, sorry, i equals the square root of minus one, so therefore i squared equals minus one. So now we've got square root minus minus one, so that becomes a square root of one, so that equals one. Now, the absolute value of i that is also one. So one equals one. So this method is now valid. So I'm going to write this one on the board. Z times conjugate Z. Now in another video, I'm going to try some more complicated values. Like for example, I'm going to try one plus two I and see where that takes us. These, complicate, these calculations will be far more complicated, but make uh, also for another interesting video. So anyway, let's go on to a, another so the next one I've got is z divided by the sine of z. Now, the sine function just gives us a positive or negative value, i.e. positive one or negative one, depending on if it's a positive value of z. So we've got minus one in here. So let's plug that in there. So our z is minus one, and then our sine of minus one is also minus one. So just write that in there for you, sine of minus one. So that becomes minus one over minus one. So therefore our absolute value of minus one is still one. So that's our modulus confirmed for minus one. Let's try it for i. So, absolute value of z2 
equals i divided by sine of i. Okay, so now the sine of i, now i here we'd have an imaginary one, so i is the same as one times i, so therefore this here is a positive, so basically it's i over positive one, so that just equals i, absolute value of i is still one, so the modulus of uh, i is one. So this one is working for our two complex numbers. So let's just write that one in there. So z over sine of z. That's our second one. Right, that is the square root of negative z squared. And then from that we add 2z times the real z. So here, the real z, that is our a coefficient. Okay, so let's plug that in there. So for z1, that's minus 1. So we've got minus, minus 1 squared, plus 2 times minus 1. And then the real part of this is still minus 1. Okay. Let's just clean this up. Minus 1 squared, that's going to give us positive 1. But not forgetting this minus sign. Minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1. Times 2 is 2. And then we can see now minus 1 plus 2 is 1. Square root of 1 is 1. So that's ticked. Let's try for z2. So now, using our formula here, we've got minus i squared plus 2 times i, and then the real part of i. Okay, so this one's going to give us a little bit of a different way of calculating. So we're still in the, we're in the radical. So i squared is minus 1. Minus 1 with a minus in front is going to give us positive 1. 2 times i is 2i, but the real part of i, there is no real. The a coefficient is 0. So this here all disappears and that becomes 0. So then this equals square root of 1, which equals 1. So therefore, that's valid for our two complex numbers here. So I'm going to write this one on here as well. Minus z squared plus 2z times the real part of z. Okay, let's go on to... Okay, so this time, still in a square root term, we've got minus 2i, and then multiply that by z, and then with that, we've got the imaginary part of z and then we add that with z squared okay let's try our z1 so the modulus of z1 so we've got minus 2i times our z1 which is minus 1 and then the imaginary part of this one well the b coefficient is 0 so we've got a little bit of the reverse of going on what happened before, and plus z squared, so that's plus 1 squared. So now we've got all this term disappears, and we're just left with 1 squared, which is 1, and then so that equals 1. So that's valid for our z1. Let's try our z2. Let's get on with this z2. So minus 2i. 2i and multiply that by our z2 which is just i and then our imaginary part of our z2 well the imaginary part is the coefficient of here of our b which is just going to be 1 so that's multiplied by 1 and then plus z squared so that's just going to be i squared 
Okay, let's tidy this one up. So square root minus 2i times i. So that's going to be i times i is minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 2 is going to give us positive 2. So we just clean that to a positive. Then i squared is minus 1. So now we've got square root plus 2 minus 1, which is square root of 1. We know that is 1. So this one works for both of our complex numbers. So I'm going to write that one in here too. Need a little bit more room for this one. So minus 2i times z times the imaginary part of z plus z squared. We've got real part of z divided by the cosine of the argument of z. So argument of z. So how are we going to find the argument? Let's have a look at our two numbers. So let's see if we can put them on a little diagram here. So we've got minus 1 and we've got positive i. So that's our real, that's our imaginary axis. So the argument is just the angle that that makes from the positive real axis. So we need this angle here and this angle here. Well, this angle here is pi over 2. And this angle here is going to be pi. So that's going to be our arguments for both of our terms. So absolute or modulus of z1. Real part of z. So real part of this is just going to be minus 1. And then the cosine of the argument of that. So the cosine, and this one here is pi. Okay. So now we're left with minus 1 over the cosine of pi. Well, the cosine of pi yields minus 1. Minus 1 over minus 1 is 1. So that's good for that one. Let's try for z2. So now we've got the real part. So the real part of this is going to be zero. There's no real part of that one. So the real part is zero. And then we've got the cosine of the argument of i. So cosine of pi over two. So now we're going to run into a little bit of a problem. So for this one, we're going to get a zero over zero situation. This is undefined. So this is not going to work for our value here of positive i. So, but it works for this one. But when you've got a, just an i with no uh, coefficient of the real part of the imaginary number, it doesn't work. So, real z divided by the cosine of the argument z. Okay, make sure that looks like a z. Okay. So I'm going to go with the little bit of a polar opposite of that one. So the imaginary part of z divided by sine of the argument of z. Right, so I'm expecting something similar, but with the term switched on the answer for this one. So the imaginary part of z1. So modulus of z1. So minus 1, no imaginary part. That's going to give us a 0. So this is looking very much like the last one. Sine of the argument of minus 1, which argument is pi. So sine of pi. So this one will give us a 0 over 0 situation. So when there's no imaginary part, this one is not going to work for us. So let's try it now with an imaginary part. So now modulus of z2. So imaginary part of z2, that's going to give us a positive 1. And the sign of the argument of z2, well, the argument of that is pi over 2. So then that's going to give us a 1 over sine of pi over 2. Well, we know that is 1. So that's going to give us another valid 
solution for an imaginary number. So we're going to write the imaginary z divided by sine of the argument of z. Okay, let's, so this time I'm going to write on here the imaginary part of z squared plus the real part of z and squared. Okay, let's plug that one in. So the imaginary part of z squared, there is no imaginary part. The real part here is minus 1, so minus 1 squared, just so we know we're doing the modulus of z1. Okay, we can simplify this up to square root of 1, which we know is 1. Let's see if it works for a complex value. So modulus of z2, square root. Now the imaginary part we have here, we've got a plus i, so that's a 1. So we've got 1 squared, real part of this one doesn't exist, so that's a 0, so then we've got square root of 1. So this one is also valid, this one is valid for all values. So let's write this one, let's write this one here. So this is our conclusion. So this one's only valid when you've got a real term. This one's only valid when you've got an imaginary term. The others seem to be valid for all the other values of complex numbers. So in the next video I do around the modulus of complex numbers, I'm going to be trying 1 plus 2i, and then we can see how we can find the results of that. As you can see, some of these calculations are going to get a little bit more complicated. Okay, so I'm just going to leave a star next to this one with a little caveat, but the rest of them all seem to be valid.